Advanced Functions 1.2, Absolute Value. So the absolute value function you did look at in grade 11, and what it is is primarily just a victory graph. It's a big V, right? So um, if I want to find the absolute value of any number, it's always the positive of it. So anytime you have a negative number inside that bracket, you're just going to say it's the positive of it. So minus 3 and 3. 3 and 3, so they're coming down like this, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0. So you have two linear functions. This is the line y equals x and y equals negative x, but for x less than 0, this is greater than 0. You don't really need to know that. You just need to know the nice angle that it's going to go at, and you could make a table of values like this. So when you evaluate the absolute value of a negative number, it's just the positive value. This one is a little trickier, and you'll see this in your homework where you have the negative of the absolute value of minus 5. So the absolute value of minus 5, remember, that's going to be 5. And then I have the negative outside, so that's why we have negative 5. This question here, I have the absolute value of negative 44 over 11 plus minus 4 over minus absolute value of 2. So you want to get rid of these absolute value signs first. So the absolute value of negative 44 is 44. Absolute value of 11 is 11. And I'm adding negative 4 divided by 2. So that gives me 4 minus 2 is 2. Now, the textbook also asks you to express using absolute value notation. So if you have a graph like this, I should be covering up these answers. I had an interrupted phone call when I was doing this and I had to start all over again. So we're between minus 1 and 1. If I want to know what the absolute value notation for that would be, I'd say, well, it's less than 1. So it's all the numbers between negative 1 and 1. So this is kind of your key here. If the graph is actually symmetrical between these two values, just look at this one and look at how far it is from zero. So this is less than one, right? So I write absolute value of x less than or equal to, y equal to, because these are solid circles. If they're open, it's an inequality like this, greater than two, no equal sign. So this one, we start here and we go this way. It's the same distance. You have to check to make sure these are the same distance apart, right? Same distance. Sometimes you'll get ones where the graph has been moved. So here we're between, we're going from 2, we're getting bigger. So the absolute value of x is greater than 2. And this one is just showing you again like the other one where we're between these two values, so less than or equal to 2. So if I put in, you always want to check to, you know, like take, take two seconds and say, oh, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, that's less than or equal to 2. Okay, and the last two I have here, I have x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 3. So that would look like this on a number line. Sometimes it might help you to draw it on a number line before you write out the absolute value notation. It's just a little easier to, to see if you're more of a visual learner. So I'm going greater than 3, but not equal to, because it's an open circle. That's just greater than. So the absolute value of x is greater than 3. If you put in negative 5, for instance, the absolute value of negative 5 would be positive 5, and that is greater than 3. And here's the last one here I did between minus 2 and 2. So kind of a good idea to write this out first, and then I know that it has to be less than or equal to 2. Absolute value signs, you must use those to um, do it properly. Okay, now transformations. If you have a transformation of the absolute value function like this, you're, you should be so aware of these from grade 11 math that you know immediately that this function is shifted to the left three units. So one, two, three, minus three. And I just draw in my 
absolute value function. Let's head them up at 45 degree angles. This one, where the 3 is out here, that is a change to y. So you're going up 3 units, and then you just draw your graph again. That's pretty easy, isn't it? And the last one, I cheated. I have this function, 1 minus the absolute value of 3x minus 6. So you can rearrange equations. I throw the 1 over here. That gives me a vertical shift up 1. The negative, this means a reflection, a reflection about the x-axis. The plus one is a vertical shift up one unit. And be careful with these. Teachers always try to fool you with these x values where you need to factor out something first. So I factored out the 3, I have x minus 2. And so this is a horizontal, hope you're saying compression, horizontal compression by factor of 1 third. And this minus 2 means horizontal, everything x is horizontal, horizontal shift two units right. So I moved it two to the right, up one. So I went boom, boom, two to the right, up one. Reflected, so make it go down instead of up. Compress it by one third. So I'm compressing, remember, means to make it, it actually looks like a vertical stretch, is a horizontal compression. And I could um, a little, be a little more accurate by plugging in some values here, but this will give you the idea of what it should look like. Okay, so that's it for 1.2, absolute values, and some short little transformation exercises.